Hello, welcome back to Banner Saga. Let's go, let's talk. Let's fight. Spor sits on the rubble of a ruin, watching Eowyn move vast slabs. We just want an ornate meat horn. Good at time, as I need to give you this, fuck. I noticed you've got no drinking horn, and that's no way to live. I don't care to drink from a yoke's horn, old man. Dang it! Does this look like a solid yoke's horn? It's cut from the tusk of a gold bear boar. Giants even in full back. Okay, so i never seen a real gold boar, but I did still it a long time ago from a very rich man, and he seemed pretty convinced. Oka slapped me with her eyes when I told her I was giving to you. What made you think of this now? I don't know, been down a lot of roads, got a feeling that I might not see the end of this one. And I don't want to imagine Ditch using it for some disgusting thing after I'm dead. Why give it to me? Tradition Val, these young, young folk don't know respect, they don't remember a time when it was right to honor a guest. I don't care what any of them say, you're doing a fine job. Okay, that's history card he carved here. From banners and tapestries, see those armies? The task those seem to remain own. Carved figures almost look like they move as you roll it in your hands. I can't keep this. Take it, take it. It's not getting light anymore. Not like this lang spin anyway. He smiles pleased with himself. You don't seem too upset about facing death. Upset about dying? Why are you upset about leaving? <laughs> Do you know what it's like taking a piss three times a night but only waking up twice? No, that sounds fine. It sounds fine, but I'll tell you what, I'll miss my life. The secret for a poor bastard's with short lifespan. It's love. Sounds like a bunch of fraud, I know, but if you don't love life, um, it'll make you miserable. And from that from a lady friend. He smiles. Where did you learn to play? What do you mean? Who taught me? Eh, nobody taught me, it was a festival. Biggest of the year. By all rights, too young to hold my drink, sipping from every unwatched cup I could find. There's a spot happening. One guy built like a bear, holding another one over his girl, I... or... I... don't remember. Doesn't matter. This other poor bastard is a mouse! You ever seen one of those guys? In bared, white eyes, ready to run? The brute comes at him with the knife pulled right out of his dinner. And the mouse is soiling himself, climbing over tables to get away. Everyone's loving it, even the musicians stop to watch. I'm off my head drug and I'm thinking, by the gods, this needs a good song! So I grab the instrument and go wild. Saving, sa <laughs> saving and screaming. The thing just sings in my hand. At least in my head, it's a masterpiece. It must have sounded like a boiled cat. The mountain of a man, he slowly looks over at me with the most complete confusion I've ever seen and I just remember... <laughs> The next moment there's a knife in his neck. The mouse got him. Even drunk as I was, I knew it was because of me. I've been playing ever since. Frankly, it's a damn tragedy wasting my talents on these ungrateful monsters. Uh, I better go and check on Juno. Ah, you better. If these two don't find this passage soon, Bovar will fail us right in our puckered arses. Yeah. Thanks to the horn. I'll make sure nobody does anything disgusting with it. And enjoy it too! It's not a bloody decoration! It's a gift from the God Bless Silence! Thank you! <laughs> we can't rest anyway, so... Hmm. Maybe that's probably Krummer. he will stay with us long enough. Oh, the horn is for 13th level. Hmm. I thought you'd be helping Eowind. I had to check on something. 
to the horizon, the separate radars in the distance. It knows we're here, but it won't approach, hopefully. Is it scared of you? Scared? I don't think I'd understand such things. For now, it is just trying to discover what we will do next. I know the feeling. This horn towers a portals the Menders built long ago. They allow us to enter the inner earth, the dredge home. I knew the dredge came from below, but inner earth? Like caverns? No, not at all. Imagine another world with sun and sky, like your own, but within our own. This will be a dangerous path, but the quickest route to the place where Eowyn will undo all of this. You know, see the skepticism on your face without looking. I also came here to speak with you privately. I know Eowyn may seem unusual or unapproachable, but he is a good person. You seem an unlikely par pair. I can see why we would think that. The fact is, I saved him and he saved me. He is kind and devoted. There's a smile on her face, and you realize that it may be the first you've seen. I don't know how to talk about it without sounding like infatuated girl. I truly love him. I know it won't excuse things to say the Valka lead different lives, hard in their own way. But don't we all deserve to be loved by those who would do anything for us? You... Uh, you two are not making it easy. I'm not oblivious to this. I regret that I've not found a better way. When you asked to come with us, I was uncertain. I didn't want to take you away from loved ones. But I'm glad you have to, to have you here. I consider you a friend. One of the few Eowyn and I have left. I will do what needs to be done to fix all this, no matter the cost. And I've decided that no matter what happens, I will not influence you again. I promise you that. Past is important. A whistle reaches on you on the wind. You leave the churning cobbles of the serpent on the horizon and return to where the others have already entered the tower. You join the others already waiting in an enormous chamber beneath the tower. So, what do you expect to happen next? Sparse patters, a wind steps to it. We jump. Heavy footsteps echo of high walls and a dreadful outline stands in the doorway. Well done, witch, says Bulwer. They the fool of me again. A wind from here. Even from here, you can tell he's shaking with rage. A wind screams for everyone to jump, but there is only hesitation. Bulka turns and walks to Bulwer. Bulwer, get them. Marvan watches Volka with rapt anticipation. I doubt we'll get another chance to talk, Bulwark. Bulwark, so I had to know. Is there anything left of you in there? I never left, Volka. You left. We thought it was what you wanted. I thought I was following orders. What's done is done. Yeah, that does sound like you. Yet as close as you dare, the two barely acknowledge your presence. Remain silent. Go on, Volka. Get out of here. What if the Valka can undo this bul bulwark? What if they really can? It doesn't have to end like this, you stubborn dolt! They lied to you, Volka. They're lying still. Bulwark points his axe at the Valka and static flickers across Eowyn's shaking hands. Those two took our reputations. They took our freedom. They took my life. They all did. They did all of this. Even if they can save this world, I won't allow it. Are you kidding me? Life's not fair. Is that your argument? Even when I was eight years old, I never gave you such a sniveling trifle. Don't destroy everything we made to save your pride. The ravens need you, so do I. You feel the slightest shift in Bulwark's demeanor, but in bling, is gone. Jump down the rabbit hole, Volka. I won't stop coming until every one of you is dead. That's all you've got for me? Me? Volka snatches Bulwark's axe from her belt, the one he threw near Strand, and pushes it into his hand. If this is just revenge, 
Why wait? Just trying to pull her away. Oh, okay, she's fine. I've always liked you, Foka. That's why I gave you a chance to run. Things are suddenly moving too quickly to react. Without hesitation, Bull Varys bar the axe deep, blade deep into Volka's neck, and she falls in a bloody heap. Your face narrowly escapes Bulwark's second axe blade as you stumble backwards. His screaming rage fills the room until a peal of thunder drones it out. Lightning arcs from Eowyn's staff, scorching the ground around you in, in wild patterns, catching Bulwark's full cloak on fire. Ravens reluctantly leap into the pit and you follow, tumbling down into the darkness as the light from the hole above recedes. A roar rings in your ears like the bellow of a thunder. Bulwark cleans over the edge, his face red red in flames from the smoldering cloak. It's the last thing you see before everything goes black. We live as we will live. Sometimes you awaken more tired than when you fell asleep. This is one of those times. Aleo is starting to sit in bedside. Aleo, oh, were you watching me sleep? What? No, yeah, yes, I mean, Olive sent me to get you. Wasn't sure whether to shake you awake or let you. What's happening? Nothing good. Lucas free. He's creating problems out by the gates. Olive's trying to talk some sense to them now. How did Ruga get free? While we were busy fighting Asunder and saving the city, his men broke into the prison, killed some of Petrus's guards too. Are you kidding me? Wish I were. I hate to say it, but we should bring as many clansmen as we can find. It could be a grave mistake to leave them behind. You don't think they'll be safer here? I don't think we'll be safe without them. Yeah, right. Okay, I don't think they are. The renown, you know, is shared, so that's good. That's good. Ubin, you go with me. And. All we need more armor, run break, resist, protect from death. Uh, yeah, I'd much rather have this. Plus, oh, and the flex. No, never mind. Uh. You squint in the sunlight outside the cool shade of your tent, and a smell reminds you of the small farmhouses you once lived near in Skoker. The field is full of horseborn, a lot more than there were before. Yubin stands in their midst, the shepherd of a confused flock. His horseborn look rougher than the ones you've see we've been traveling with, and many spot battle injuries. These horseborn have lost a lot of leaders. All at once tells you about the new arrivals. They haven't found a lot of sympathy here, Amperang, despite helping defeat Ruin. Pay to crowd your camp, but what would you think about taking them out of your wing? Are you sure that they want that? We won't know until we ask. In times like the these, I believe it's better to have too many friends than too few. Okay, fuck. Okay, let's do this personally. Uh, yeah. You call to the heart and even translate in his charismatically deep voice. They look dubious, but some ask questions. By the end of it, many have wandered away, but some have accepted a loose alliance. Ooh. 
Maybe you should have sent Horseball. After all, what kind of trouble got stirred up that we need to the whole clan? That kind of turns into an angry mob. My least favorite kind of mob. Still gaping holes in the splintered walls to glimpse the treasure idolently lurking. Blurry eyed workers do their best to fill the cracks. The foreman spies at you at the head of the caravan. Got any fighters with strong arms? Got to know we could use them and they'll be well fed. Mm. Give them enough fighters to get the job done quick. The foreman prowls through a caravan, brow beating anyone. Health enough to shoulder timber. Not all who don't show enthusiasm, wary as the Sanders has hold of them, but the cause is worthy. Many survivors occupy the dirt along the common paths they begin to blend together. A young girl con conquers her shyness and comes begging for food at your feet. Others are inspired to do the same. Compared to these people, you have a considerable amount of supplies. The real question is how much you're willing to spare for those who aren't in your clan will keep coming in the future. Consider what they tell a growing crowd of open hands. Try your own personal spite and allow your classmen to do as they please. You hand the girl a small bundle and ruffle her hair before she runs off. The rest with open hands don't share her sweet smile when you indicate there is almost to spare. I can't just give away my man's food. We unfair. Dread killer! shouts a woman as you approach. Contrary to what some of them says again, angry mob, the opposite occurs. Thankful survivor crowd around asking questions you can answer. What if you try to attack again? What about the darkness? What do we do now? Mm. Hold out hope. I personally know the Falca are well on their way to fixing this. Many of the survivors have no money left to claim. I cheer their fealty to you and follow toward the gate. To your rising speech, you don't dare send them away. At least they seem to be making some progress on the walls. Nice when we don't have to be responsible for absolutely everything. After the end of that thunder. They finally pitched in once they realized you're not going anywhere. I don't know why, but I find myself instinctively worrying about Alet as I approach the gates, even though I know she's gone. Despite everything else going on, it's still mankind that worries me the most. A growing crowd is gathering at the gates. It is easy to tell the curious bystanders from the hard and darkened faces of Urga's loyalists, but there are plenty of different colors being flown here. The Varl are also nearby, looking uncomfortable. As you step forward, the disgruntled murmur of the crowd turns into the squeaking of rats skittering into hiding holes. Urga, as always, wears the satisfied smile on a, of a man who drowns his own humility in bottomless ambition long ago. Ugh, 
<laughs> Our savior has joined us. Maybe now we can hear some sense. I'm tired of listening to him pitch up. You'd prefer it to my bite? That's why a vicious dog should be muzzled. Disrespect Oddleaf again and we see what happens. Enough of this sparring. I wouldn't want to distract from the issue to hand. As usual, I only want to protect our people, but Oddleaf hears what she pleases. We only want to condemn. It starts with the dredge. How long before you convince them we're the next enemy? What do you mean start with the dredge? She would throw away all of our sacrifice to let them walk through the gates. Just as there are all here, Holesborn, many of those outside these gates are women and children too. We've known this. We've been taken in a dredge infant whose mother was slain. That's been amongst you this whole time. Ruga's eyes grow wide at this. A disapproving murmur ripples through the crowd. Be that as it may, tell me why I just lost the good of our fighting them. For hundreds of years. When our leaders tell us to fight, we fight. The threat are no different. Belor is gone. Eyeless and Ruin are gone. Are the best... Are the rest beating down our doors, crying for blood? No, they cry out for mercy. All I'm suggesting is that we don't leave them to suffer in the darkness. We can find a way. Before he died, our king said everyone lives. Who is Ruga to disagree? He is no king. Oddleaf is right. There is no king. But there was an agreement made, if I remember correctly. I'm glad you brought your banner. Ruga again turns to the crowd, speaking loudly. The Sandra Slayer, the great hero from Skullgur, has seen fit in his wisdom to join his banner to mine. I wanted you all, all to witness his, this great union. A collective gasp goes up from the crowd, followed by laughter from some, murmur and disbelief from others. Let this pointless debate over dredge end here and let there and let there be peace between the clans. He turns quietly back to you, a sinister grin on his face. Peace under my rule. Never! Spits Oddleaf, grappling the banner away from the men already gathering it up. This was my husband's father. He died as chief of Skogr, and I'll die before I send it over to you, Ruga. You can see the turmoil rising between the crowds on both sides, shouting at you and each other. Trusted classmen demand to know how we could deliver them to Ruga, while rowdy loyalists scream for Oddleaf to give over the banner, be beaten and worse. You turn back to see one of Ruga's eager brutes grab Oddleaf by the wrist. Wrestling with her with the banner, she looks to you both terrified and heartbroken. Call off the deal with Ruga. There will be no joining of banners, you shout, and Ruga's face twists in fury that usually rests beneath the school exterior. Before he can argue, his clansmen act for him. Innocent people begin to fall to access and a battle cries break cries break out around you. I just can't, he's too big of an asshole. Really? Oh, I really prefer this. Uh, this poison. I think we are fine. Yeah. Although I really should equip others that I don't bring with me, with items. Of course Ruga is not here. Look at her! That lady! Look at her chilling! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. <sighs> By killing him. Perfect. Dip. This one's next? No, who's next? This guy's next. Okay, yeah. so we can move like this. Who's next? This guy. 
I would rather move you. Whoops, nope. Move you like this. And wait. Right. God damn it. That guy is next. Oh yeah, we can do this. Is next, and I can't get close enough. No, <laughs> he needs help with this guy. Oh my god. That guy is next, so we don't want to go. <laughs> I would love to get out so I can hit him. Damn it. You really hate Rook. There was a chance that he would die. Oh. <sighs> he said say you are now. next that guy over there can get close enough Lots of armor. God damn it, he's dead. <laughs> yeah, let's. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sure. Right, he's not poisoned. Damn it. For his arm with them. We need to kill Ruga. Should have done that. Should have done that long time ago. A lull in the fighting, but it looks far from over. If anything, it just began, and that's what worries you most. There's no need for this, you shout. It falls on deaf ears and more and more mental weapons. The wind picks up, tearing at banners that whip above your hand, heads. A growing gale throws men from their feet and bludgeons your senses of balance. A storm funnels approaches, 
Crawling above the gates, riding in a zephyr, her blood and her curiously untouched by the milestone. She lands amidst the fighters like a leaf delicately falling from the tree. Somehow they fang in its grace. Stop this lunacy! She howls. What is this? Put your weapons down! Even Ruga's unflappable demeanor seems subdued in the Volga's presence. Traitors threatened to open the gates and let loose the trash. We only meant to stop them. There, you are the only real threat here, Ruga. Warped creatures reside within the coming darkness, twisted and ferocious. That is a true threat now. I would have come sooner, but I was searching for a solution to protect Arborang, and I may have found one. If everyone can be civil for a moment. Where are the king's menders? I need them all. They've done as they please since Maynolf died. He's dead? Then as the last surviving bulk, I'm taking control here. I expect the rest of you to put aside your differences while I gather the menders. Uh, what about the treach outside the gates? I'm sure she has little time to worry about such petty disputes. Zeph rubs her template in frustration. You don't need to befriend, befriend the dredge, only make space for them within the walls. When the warped, co when the warped come, they will be ran relentless. We cannot afford to give them a a more weapons against us in the coming days. Therefore the parts, ushered by a rising gust of air that lifts her toward the keep, she leaps in long bounds like a springing reindeer, out of sight within moments. Ruga looks to be at loss, but only for a moment. How oh, vindicated you must feel, I envy you. But not everyone is so reasonable, so easily persuaded as me. Convince them! Raises his voice again over the distressed murmur of the crowd. Step outside the gates, brave Rook. Ease our minds, the Valka thinks they can be trusted. Walk amongst the Dread Slayer, throw down your weapon and prove to us all how harmless they are. Open the gate. Ruga flinches in surprise when you give the order. Hides in quickly. You called his bluff, and now you have to deliver. Slowly the large door are, are pulled open for you. Oddly whispers to you quickly before you step beyond the gate. Dredge infant, I'll come with you, bearing the baby. Maybe they would see it as a gesture of peace. We don't know how they'll react. I'll take the baby, but you stay here. Actually, come with me. Olive nods. The dredge child is quickly brought forward, and Olive stands beside you, carrying the bundle in her arms. Everyone is waiting for her next move. You take a deep breath. Someone pushes the skull grip on it into your hand, and it weighs heavily. Dredge stands shoulder to shoulder beyond the gate. The rolling stops as you approach and there are many yellow eyes turn in your direction like a field of sunflowers. You force your legs to move. The dredge part around you, it feels suffocating even though they do nothing but watch. Now completely surrounded you turn around where equally captivated glancemen stare breathlessly from inside the walls. The dredge nearby look with curiosity at the dredge child in Olive's arms. The air is still as if itself afraid to breathe. You raise the banner. Dredge follow as you and Olive walk back into Arborang. They follow through the gate, they follow into the courtyard. And then a man shouts, you can see his face clearly. You don't recognize him, just some guy. You're not sure exactly what he's shouting, but it sounds like he'll kill us all! He hurls a spear towards you, other draw weapons, they raise bows, everyone reacts at once. I'm sorry, says Olive softly. Before you could react, she had stepped in front of the spear meant for you. There are tears in her eyes as she closes them for the last time, still cradling the dread child. Desperately, you wrap Old Leaf's body in your banner, dragging frantically through the squall of battling clansmen as if they weren't there, a sudden blow to the back of the head steals your side. Dizzy, you're rising, being pulled by your cloak. It's Petrus, whose guards are scattered and overrun. The mob bucks like a wild beast. Nearby, a varl brings his shield crashing down on someone's head, Wolves born scream in the distance. The smell of smoke fills the air. Blades launch at you from different directions and you emerge bleeding around the corner of an alley. We need Zephyr, you cry, pulling at the body still within the banner. Though you know it's too late, the violence is spilling out further into the city. 
Rioters smash down doors and corpses lay openly in the streets. Some of them are very young. There is no cure for this, but receive Arborang is broken. Arborang is broken. Now the strength of your banner will determine how long you can hold out while Ivor and the Valka push on to their destination. Your choice is up to this point. The number of clansmen, fighters, Val, and supplies remaining buy you days of survival. When your days run out, catastrophe will follow. Use this time wisely. We have twelve days. Okay. Oh. Oh. That's not a lot. Lots of fighters. No, lots of clansmen. Twenty-six days. Oh, that doesn't seem good. Not at all. We find Zephyr near the keep where she's preparing the menders. She turns as you approach. Captain Petrus, I told everyone to stop fighting. My friend is hurt badly. You have to help her. Do so. Do something, please. Revealed the lifeless body of old leaf wrapped in your banner. Zephyr shakes her head. I'm sorry. Even the Valka should not meddle with the dead. How did it happen? This has been coming since Maynolf died. I regret I could not have come sooner, but many more are about to die. Listen carefully. I devise a shield of light that holds back the darkness, but its reach... But its reach is limited. With the Mentors joining their efforts, we may be able to en encircle all of Arborang. It will mean positioning them evenly across the walls, and if madmen are running wild in the streets, killing indiscriminately, I'll make sure that doesn't happen. I'll leave Old Leaf. I'll have Old Leaf taken somewhere safe. Just until we can pay our specs properly. You know what? No. How long can you keep this spell of light going, Valka? Assuming the plan works at all, perhaps if we rest in shifts, a number of days, it depends on our food supplies and stopping the warp from slaughtering our menders. They told me of out of a sunder, no small thing, but that will be nothing compared to what is coming. What do the warp even want with Arborag? As far as I can tell, only mindless death and destruction. It is why I wanted the dredge inside the walls. And the other Valka, Juno and Eowyn, they can stop all of this? We cross paths. They continued into the darkness. If they're going where I think they're going, and if they actually make it, there is hope. But none of it matters unless we get these menders safely on the walls. And that's gonna be it for today. Well, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!